Hi everyone, I'm Lou Collins from Craft Stash and as many of you know, I've just been recreating a brand new craft room, organising, getting all my storage in place and labelling as well. And I couldn't have done this without my two trusty label machines, so I want to show you how easy these are to use. Now today I'm going to be using the Dymo Label Manager and the Brother P-Touch machine as well. So these are the two machines and their boxes. I'm going to run through each with you, showing you the benefits of each, so you can make your mind up as to which one suits you best. I'm actually going to create some labels for some of the storage left in my craft room that I've not yet labeled. So this is kind of using my time wisely. So I'm going to start with the Brother P-Touch machine first. So the Brother P-Touch labelling machine, this comes with its own storage and carry case. You can have this either plugged into the mains or it takes six AA batteries. Now this is amazing because there are 14 different fonts on here. Obviously you can change the colours of your um, tapes that you put in and it does come with one sample already. And there's something like 97 frames that you can have around your wording as well. So you really can get quite decorative with your labels if you wish. As with either of the machines, they are really simple to use. Now I've got mine plugged into the mains. I prefer to have this one out on my desk most of the time um, and plugged in rather than have it handheld. That's what I've got my Dymo for, but that's completely your choice. Like I say, you can, if you want to, put batteries in this and have it completely handheld. So when it comes to changing the cartridge, it's really simple. You've just got a, a gray button on the top. You just lift out the cartridge and You've got on here actually a diagram that shows you which way round to go, so it's really simple, and you just pop the next one in and close that up. Okay, so I'll try and keep the screen so that you don't have too much in the way of light reflecting on it. Now, before you start typing your first label, you need to decide whether you want it capitals or not. So let's just see where we are. Um, we need to do Karen markers. It's okay, yep, we're on capitals. If you see, if we press that again, you're going to go down to lowercase. Now, just like a normal uh, keypad or keyboard, you've got your backspace there. Um, let's just see. So we need to go backspace, put that back up to capital R I N. So I'm not worried about saying markers. I know they're Karen markers. I can now choose things like my font by pressing this button and press enter. So I've got my sizes. So I've got medium, small and large. I quite like medium. Press enter again and that will accept that. Go back to my font button. So I've got size, I've got the width of the font, I've got the style of the letters, I've got the alignment. Here's my actual font, so press enter. And we can run through all of those, what, 19 fonts there are, I believe. There's a lot in there. So, sorry, 14 fonts in here. So let's go back, I quite like the first one and that was Helsinki, I believe. There we go, so I'll press enter. There we go, okay. Now I can preview my label by pressing this magnifying glass just here, and that will show you what your label is going to look like. So you've got a rough idea there. I'm happy with that, so I can press the green print button. I do want one copy. If I could turn that round, you can see that's printed out of the top. So simply by pressing the scissor button on the side here, that's going to cut your label for you and you've got that trimmed already. Now, of course, you can cut that down further if you wish. There are settings in the machine for each label. I won't go into everything in too much detail, but on the back of each of these labels, the backing is actually split into two halves, making it really easy to peel off. So let's now take a look at the Dymo Label Manager. So the Dymo has a slightly smaller screen here and what I like is when you turn it on it actually comes up with the last thing that you are doing. This means your settings are saved. So if I was to continue working on some organisation or storage and I wanted to ensure that I've got exactly the same labels again, I know that's already stored in here. So you do need to delete the last word that you printed off. And again, we have got a QWERTY keyboard here. Um, we have got options as well. So we've got fonts here. So you can see the font size there, 0 0.8. Press it again, 0 0.10, 0 0.12, 0 0.16, 0 0.20, and 0 0.24. And then it goes back down to eight. 
I tend to print roughly in either 16 or 20. You can have these bold or italic if you wish. You can also have them underlined or you can change the orientation so that the words are um, going horizontal or vertical. So with the menu button, you've got the symbols that you might need that are not on the keyboard and you've also got your label width. So if you press OK onto any of those, you can change the width, but that does need to be determined by the cartridge that you've got in the machine. So it's very easy to remove the back and see the cartridge. And once again, this is a simple lift out, press in cartridge. This machine also takes batteries, but you also have the option of connecting it to a power source if you wish. Your upper and lower case are just here for the machine and it will tell you in the top corner which one you've selected. Although we can format the text with things like the size, bold, etc., we don't have any different font options on here that I can see or have found since using this machine. So I'm going to type in capital letters again the word that I want. So I'm going to do this for my Ecline pens this time. And like I say, point 20, I've got it in capitals there. I don't need it in bold or anything like that. And I'm just going to press the print button. That's coming out of the top again. And we press the scissor action on the side in a similar way to just release that. There we go. So with this one, once again, you do have the split back for the label. So as you can see, both machines work in very similar ways and both have many of the same advantages. And I can't see any disadvantages to them except for the fact that the Dymo only has the one font that I've ever found. Certainly the Dymo is easier to have as handheld. So if I'm walking around my craft room labeling things, it's much easier to hold in one hand and type on. Whereas I do find with the brother one that does need to be sat down on a desk, ideally. And don't forget, of course, you can use your labelling machine for things like your sentiments and your titles on your cards and scrapbook pages, giving them an extra use too. So these are the two labelling machines that I personally use in my craft room, and these are both available at Craftstash. You'll find out all the details in the description below.